Welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be reviewing and fully going over the stereo, the backup camera, and the OBD2 scanner. How to use manual, a tip. And finally, the head unit. And of course, all the cables that are needed to install it. Here's the backup camera. Pretty straightforward. You have the camera, you have the cables that plug into the unit. And finally, the OBD2 scanner. Of course, we're gonna install it in that 2008 Chevrolet Tahoe. Here's the unit we'll be replacing it with. A few of the clips ended up getting corrupted, so here I am remaking the clips for you. Yes, I reinstalled the old stereo just for you. To uninstall the stereo, you want to be careful. Go ahead and order yourself some of these uh, cheap panel trim removers. So we need to remove this trim. So let's go ahead and start from the top. So try to get in between the panel. It's about three clips on both sides. Follow this side and bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so there's actually four clips on both sides. Go ahead and grab a seven millimeter. Zip, zip. There's usually two more bolts here. It's just that this dash has been cracking a lot through the years. So anyways, just pull this out. You can just hang them there. Yeah, four more bolts here and here. It just pulls right out. Oh, I forgot to plug in the plugs here. Let me plug them in for you. These are pushing tabs. You want to push these tabs in and just pull up. There you have it. That's how you uninstall this head unit. Pretty straightforward. And we're done. This is the wiring diagram. So let's get started. It's time to grab the big lump of wires. Let's go ahead and plug it in. The plugs can only go one way. I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging things in. This is the USB for Apple CarPlay. It has the three holes. So this one goes where the three holes are and locks in just like that. Now this one is coming from the stack of wires. Goes right there with all these connections. This one plugs in right there. Black Same. connector goes right here. This seems to be the backup camera. That seems to be it so far. With everything plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, we now have the GPS and the mic to install. I'm thinking of installing both of them, mm -hmm. kind of like the OEM mic would have been inside of here. Uh, so let's see if I have room up there. There's two bolts, one here and one here. It takes a T15. I can fit the GPS up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing I'm just gonna that. bring this down a little bit, try your best not to break it. I'm gonna snake that cord into and it. And I will be snaking it all the way down this A-pillar, then down to the dash. So I'm gonna put it right there. You can use a tool like this to stuff it behind the A-pillar. Just pull up the gasket and keep going down. You want this to be clean and not dangle on your legs, so make sure you put it above all the mounting hardware that pulls through. That's right there. I'm gonna tie it right here. This cord then doesn't drop back here. And this cord gets plugged in right here where it says GPS. Here's the cord for the antenna. Plug it in just like that. I'm now gonna snake this USB down underneath the same way I snaked the antenna. So the USB would be right down there somewhere. This is a speaker, so I'm gonna put the speaker on this metal box back here. And the reason I'm putting on the metal box, not the plastic, is because I'm soon going to remove all this plastic and repair all the cracks on my dash. And that'll be on a video on my other channel on Bills United here pretty soon. There are extra wires for the camera up front, which I may install in a future video. I am now just gonna temporarily install one or two bolts. This black wire right here is for the mic. I do have an external mic, so I'm gonna install that. Plug that in right there. To bring the cord all the way through, because I'm gonna install this mic right underneath here. I'm just gonna secure it right Plug here. sucker in right there. Let's install the backup camera. Welcome to the back of the Tahoe. So we have the camera. We have 
the power to the camera right here which we will splice into the tail lights then we have the video input right here which we plug right here to the camera so step one is to gain access to the reverse tail light and to do that there are two phillips heads one here and one below it go ahead and shake the tail light out gotta be just a little bit aggressive and as you can see the reverse light is the plug in the middle and the way that you should splice these two wires in is by using a quick splice snap wire connector that's just a non-invasive way to do it red goes to the blue wire and black goes to the black wire i did not have the correct size splice connector so this is the way i did it i definitely recommend using the splice connector now i'll be running the wire up behind this panel so go ahead and remove the phillips head on the bottom right and the top right now you will have enough access to slide that wire up behind that panel my goal is to install this camera on the lysa tailplate um, panel if you want to call it that so go ahead and pull that wire through and reinstall the four phillips heads holding in the tail light and that panel and i went through the whole process of removing on the trim and panels and all that stuff just to find out that the two bolts that hold that trim panel on are free spinning so I cannot remove that panel. If you want to try to see if those bolts will come off for you I'll post a video down below on how to access that panel but for the sake of this video I'm just going to fast forward through it. That plastic isn't stopping it from free spinning so uh, I'm not gonna install it here I'm gonna go back to my second plan and put it up there. So you want to run the wire from the outside of the car to the inside of the car. And to do that, you want to go ahead and detach this trim panel, which is pretty easy. You just pull it on it. And then you're going to want to stick the wire through that hole right there and run it through that trim panel and all the way through front to where the head unit is. Go ahead and pull that wire through that hole. You'll have to snake it a little bit. It's not too hard. So I'm resorting to install this reverse camera on the roof spoiler. So there are two mounting points where the hinges are for the tailgate. Then there are three T25s. Then you just remove that plug and it should be able to pull that sucker right off. Now mark your spots where you're gonna drill the holes so you can mount this camera. Use a drill bit smaller than the screws that came with the camera so you can easily screw the screws into that hole without it being too loose, all while being secure. Reinstalling the roof spoiler was kind of finicky, but take your time and you'll be able to get it. Make sure the gasket is underneath the roof. Now I ran the wire up to the roof and all the way around to the front and through the gasket and doors and finally to the head unit. And plug the yellow aux into the cam in cord. It is labeled, it says cam in, not the video in, but the cam in. And we are done. Reinstall everything. And now let's go through all these functions. Nice, everything works so far. Let's go ahead and reinstall everything real quick. So it's been a couple of days and I'm very impressed with this unit. Let me go ahead and go through all these functions real quick. I saved it for y'all. After I go through the functions, I'll show you how to set up this OBD2 reader because it will connect to this head unit. So first of all, as you can see, it shows you that the door is open. You can either shut the door or you can click it to remove that notification. Since I just set up the reverse camera, let's go ahead and see how it works. Then click the truck to the reverse. The camera will automatically go to the reverse picture. Once you get done reversing, you can put it back in the park. So we can go into the settings, go to reverse, and we can add reverse trajectory. So as I turn the steering wheel, the trajectory does move. The most exciting part about this head unit was the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So go ahead and go to your Bluetooth, open up your cell phone, press search, click Chris's iPhone, put in the pin, which should be 0000. zero, zero, zero press pair and now it says pair successful right there as you can see my bluetooth music is already playing on the bluetooth selection and this is how you turn up the volume this is this button right here and you can mute it just by pressing this power button all right hopefully i won't get a copyright strike from that and yes these controls do work on the head unit this is to skip a song and this is to go back and of course you can make phone calls out and in pretty standard the audio is pretty good this t-link will not be right here in the front page it'll just have a plus app right there so go ahead and press that plus and add the t-link to this bar right here and basically it'll send you to this selection here and t-link will be on the second page so let's go ahead and connect to apple carplay press the t-link once you have it up here it says connecting your phone will say, you want to use it? Yes, use Apple CarPlay. When it initially connects, it does take a second. So it's actually not connecting for some reason. So let's go ahead and press home. And when I first connected my phone, I did not have this issue, nor when I connected my wife's phone. It's going to go to settings, go to more. Now apps and notifications. Go to the recent open apps. If you don't see T-Link up here, then press see all 26 apps, but let's go to T-Link right there. And let's go ahead and first stop the app. 
Now let's go ahead and redo that. It could be because I just disconnected Apple CarPlay and reconnected it. So let's, let me go ahead and restart my phone. Make sure I'm connected to CarLink Blink, which I'm not. So let's go ahead and connect to okay. that. I'm connected here. Let's go ahead and connect here. All right, it says pair successful. It says my phone right there. So I just have to reset my phone. I was probably confused since I just deleted it. So this is the front page. You have Google Maps right here. Then we have the Spotify, which I can just play. Other oh, volumes off. To go home, we just press home right here. And of course, you can call people from here as well. Every time I the car, and once you open the door, it turns off. So in order to use split screen, we can press this. You can hold this, drag this to the left. So now we have two apps open. So of course, you'd be on maps on this app and maybe something else on this app. Just something really cool you can use. Now that's actually pretty cool. Let's go ahead and exit split screen mode by pressing the middle and either sliding left or right, depending which one you want. So let's go here. We got, we're back at Bluetooth. And of course you have a radio right here. We're among the most I've already set up my stations. How you set up a station is click to whatever station you want. Then you just hold which one you want to replace and it's replaced. See, it's 88.9. In order to change the audio settings, go press the app button, press DSP. So that's kind of cool. You can turn down the bass from the front to the rear. You can turn up the boost, the bass. It shows the surround sound here, and you can adjust where the sound's gonna go to as well. You can go back to equalizers. Let's connect to the Wi-Fi. This is basically a 32 gigabyte tablet that connects to your car. So you can connect to Wi-Fi and use these different apps and download games, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hotspot. My hotspot's now turned on. Let's go to Wi-Fi network. Use Wi-Fi. It's now on. You can connect to the hotspot or Wi-Fi, but if you're on the go, you can connect to the hotspot. I'm now connected. Go to Google if we want to. We can search anything. Hi. Go on YouTube. Search my channel. Let's go ahead. For this. Who doesn't like them? I mean, I can kind of get where you might not like them. So the picture them. quality is actually pretty nice. You can download games. In order to download games, you go to Android Auto. Um, you have to sign in, so I'm just gonna do that. Okay, it's now installing the game right here. No, <laughs> You can connect the USB to this and download other things by going to the file manager. So that's kind of cool. In order to set up the time, we can go ahead and go to settings, go to system, time and date. Let's go to our time zone. United States. We are in central time zone, so time is now connected. There's also a drop down menu, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, do the equalizers, which I was just at, you know, that stuff. Settings, we go to settings, adjust the brightness. Now since we've gone through all that, let's go ahead and connect the OBD2. In this Tahoe and most cars in general, the OBD2 plug will be basically right there. Underneath the dash, so go ahead and connect. Go on Bluetooth, press settings, Bluetooth data services. Here in your device, click OBD2, passwords one, two, three, four. Press OK. Then we go home, go to torque. Already set up a vehicle profile. Go to settings. Settings. OBD D2 adaptive settings. Press choose Bluetooth device right here. Click that. Now it's connected. You see my revs right here. A little complicated to set it all up, but it's definitely worth it. Um, what I'm interested to see is my fault codes. I have no fault codes as expected. All right, so this is telling me all my sensors. If you're having an issue with emissions, make sure all your OT sensors are working properly. Oh look, we have zero to 60. Let's see if it does. Okay, so it's automatically gonna calculate. I'm not gonna drive zero to 60 right now. So what are my honest and final thoughts? I'm actually extremely satisfied with the head unit. It looks OEM. It feels like my truck stepped 10 years in the future. Even the blinker sounds like a new car. The audio quality actually sounds better, which is pretty surprising. I did not expect that. And what's even more exciting is that I don't need to plug in an aux cord anymore. Done with those days. If you want this head unit and this video helped you out, then go ahead and use the link down below. That will 
be directly supporting me and my channel and that'd be awesome since it has been a few days i did already repair this cracked dash and it's not making any more noises and just not having something constantly making noise is really nice paired with a nice updated head unit so if you want to see that video it'll be uploaded here pretty soon on my other channel called bills united that's where i basically work on cars and it's a little bit different content from this channel this is chris automotivate thank you for taking your time watching this video hopefully it helped you out on your endeavors to modernize your tahoe always appreciate and respect another i'll see you next time